Uh, hello all. Welcome to the sixth session of Chat with TCN's Way to Victory. Uh, my name is Tolika. I have Chaitanya and Niranjan with me today. So I'm a first year HRM and LR student of TIS Mumbai. I have done my graduation from NIT Bhopal, Bhopal in Computer Science and Engineering. Post that, I worked at Oracle for a year. Uh, Chaitanya, if you could introduce yourself. Yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Chaitanya Nagne. I have completed my Master of Commerce from Sydney College in Mumbai. And uh, I have two years of work experience in the field of uh, human resource management. I have worked at Yes Bank and Republic World Television. Ranjan? Hi. Good evening. Uh, this is Niranjan. And uh, I graduated from uh, TIS HRM and LR in uh, 2020. So I just graduated and now I'm working with TCS as a human resource manager. And before engineering, I studied mechanical engineering and did some sales uh, prior to that. Uh, thank you, Niranjan, for coming today and gracing the session. So we'll start with the presentation. Uh, we'll first talk about TIS and about life at TIS. And in the later part, we'll talk about the strategy of TISnet and TISMAT and how to approach for the same. Um, if you could please enable my screen sharing. Okay, so what it what is this? It is one of the most premier B school of India, and uh, so we'll just start with about what uh, what is uh, so special about this. What is pedagogy, and uh, what is the life at this, and different opportunities presented this. So it was established in the year 1936 as Sir Dorabji Tata Graduate School of Social Work. Uh, it is present in four cities. It has four campuses and of more than 100 courses it offers. So the four cities are Mumbai, Guwahati, Tuljapur, and Hyderabad. So the most, uh, the I would say the very like uh, unique feature is the Sir Dorabji Tata Memorial Library. It offers the best in class facilities and resources for us to study. And we could not have survived the first semester without the online resources available. It has also been rated graded uh, AAA with a score of 3.89 by NAC in 2016. So what is so unique about this and the HRM and LR program? So it produces business leaders with social sensitivity. Um, the feeling of community is very strong at this. So as we know that the world is changing very quickly, it is becoming more materialistic. So in such, this makes sure that in such changing environment in changing circumstances, it produces leaders who are socially sensitive and who care about others, who are empathetic towards others, who can understand the others. So, and especially the HRM and LR program. So it produces the HR leaders who are able to understand others, who, their employees, and hence carry forward the team. So it the, I mean, this helps us to conquer the business world with a social mind. So this Mumbai HRM and LR is not just a B school, it is one notch better. So what is so unique about this that differentiates it from the other B schools? So we have a research-based curriculum. Uh, we have dissertation as part of our program. It starts from second semester uh, to then continues to third and fourth semester. We have four, four fieldwork internships, which I'll talk about further. We have two social work stints and interdisciplinary courses. So we have CBCS courses, uh, which let us, which allow us to choose courses from other disciplines. And it helps us in interacting with people from various schools. So that is one of the unique thing. Now the USP of this, as you can see, there are various things. I'll go one by one. First is the foundation courses. 
So foundation courses are something unique to TIS. We have uh, India's developmental challenges and ideas of India. So it teaches us about uh, various uh, social uh, social side of India. That is, it talks about poverty. It talks about gender biases and various things. Even the teachers, even the uh, faculty present are faculty who teach us are very uh, renowned in their fields. So every lecture given by them is really uh, good. Field works, we have four field. I'm sorry. So we have four field works as part of our curriculum. There are two types of field work. One is concurrent and block. So due to uh, the online classes, we also had block field works. So this is something unique to this that uh, uh, compared to other B schools, when you pass out of this, you have an experience of five different organizations compared to one in other B schools, that is a summer internship. So here we have we have allotted uh, different organizations in each semester and we have to work for them. Now, as I said, dissertation, as I talked earlier about dissertation. So dissertation helps in the, the curricular is research based. You know more about a subject when you really read about it, when you uh, go deep about it. So dissertation uh, is not confined to your course of HRM and LR. You can choose any topic from any school and you can work about it and develop your understanding of that. The next is ruler immersion program. So due to the online nature of the classes this year, we could not attend ruler immersion program. Maybe Niranjan, would you like to add something in this? Yeah. So this is a very unique uh, opportunity for uh, Tissians coming to TIS to have a look at the different side of the country. For example, it may sound very uh, similar to many of us that uh, how does, it, does an economy function like in a village or how people live in a village. But uh, it would be a new experience or a different experience for many of us. For example, it's not like uh, the students are taken just to a village and made to stay there to see how things are in village, but uh, students were take, will be taken to some, uh, some uh, organization or NGOs that are working on the ground uh, be with them, collaborate in what they are working for a few days, say 7, 8, 12, 15 days, understand how they operate, meet and interact with the different stakeholder uh, of the program that is being run, uh, that is impacting a social, uh, social change on the ground. And that gives you a first-hand experience of how things are happening on the ground. Also, uh, it helps you build empathy towards people of other kind. For example, uh, you have been or uh, been born, born and brought up in a city. Uh, when you become a human resource manager, you will be managing people from various backgrounds, social, political, demographic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How do you build that uh, empathy and sensitivity towards people who are not like us or? we have not grown up with. So this is that uh, immersion help you understand that and uh, expand your sensitivities towards it. Uh, similar is the NGO state that is uh, that happens after the completion of two year course, you go and partner with any organization, NGO which is working in the social sector of your choice, understand their model, uh, try to help them improve their model and offering. For example, I could go to say Sulab Sochale, the, the organization that runs Sulab Sochale. And I, as an intern, would uh, try to understand uh, what is that that keeps their organization running. It's a non-for-profit non organization. How they do work and operate. Are there any areas where we as as an HR, inter, uh, HR professional can intervene and help them maximize their efforts, maximize their uh, impact on the ground. So it will be one of uh, unique experiences of dealing with that. For example, when you go in organization and uh, take up CSR activities or help your team to go about it, these experiences also come in real handy at that point of time. Also, your understanding about various other uh, facets of society uh, 
the expense. Thank you so much, Niranjan. That was very nicely explained. Uh, so next we have international exchange program. So we have a dedicated international relation office at this and it caters to the international exchange program. And also there's a um, opportunity for uh, NRIs, foreigners, OCI and PIOs for the admissions. So the process of uh, the international admissions are that you have to visit the website tis.edu. There you will find all the related relevant information. Uh, there will be an online exam followed by uh, an online, online or face-to-face uh, personal interview and also GMAT is mandatory for that. So this year the GMAT score was 650. It changes every year and it's updated on the website. Now opportunities at this, as you can see um, that we have various case study winners from like really reputed organizations in the industry, Mahindra and Mahindra, ITC, uh, ABG, Colgate Palmolive. So this gives a platform to showcase talent one has. And also uh, it offers various opportunities like the opportunities for PPI, which one can convert into placements later on. So these are some of our fieldwork recruiters. The list is not exhaustive. I mean, there, I mean, there are a lot of huge names as you can see, which come at the campus to recruit like HUL, ITC, Colgate Palmolive, Nivea, RPG, Mahindra, etc. Our final placements. Uh, these are the final placements for the batch of 2020. The average CTC this year was 21.15 LPA. The highest was 32.79 and median was 20.25. So as you can see, there's not much difference between the median and the average CTC offered. So this shows that everyone gets an equal pay. So whereas in other B schools, you see there is a lot of, there's a huge difference between the median and the average CTC. So this shows that uh, like we all are treated equally and everyone gets what they deserve. So the total number of recruiters this year were 36, 20 PPOs were offered and 15 lateral placement offers were made. Uh, these are the final placements recruiters of 2020. Again, this list is not exhaustive. There are a lot more and everyone gets placed and we have 100% placements every year. These are some of our notable alumni. Uh, Niranjan, if you can please talk about this. So a uh, uh, few big names or the who's and who's of HR industry come from this HRM and LR, like Adil Malia. Uh, who was also one of the key people in SR Steel when it was growing up. Uh, Santrup Mishra, the person who just changed the, uh, the thought that HR leaders cannot be the business leader because he's the first HR head who runs Carbon Black of ABG as a business leader as, as well. Uh, Sudipto Mandol, uh, Sumana Chaudhary, Bhuvaneshwar Nayak, who was uh, till uh, very recent a global HR lead uh, at SAP uh, or uh, the current uh, HR director SAP uh, or Artisian. Um, and the name and the name is huge. Be it the startups at uh, OYO, uh, that is uh, uh, Mr. Ramachandran, who is the CHRO there, is Artisian, to the established organizations like LNT or uh, ABG or uh, Tata Motors. Uh, Tata Motors CHRO is also a decision as far as I remember. So yeah, uh, even the CHRO in, in, uh, for India, Ranjay Radhakrishnan is from, uh, on, from Rekit Ben Kaiser is a decision. So be it the startup space, the HR leadership is being represented by this alumni or the established con conglomerates and uh, international, multinational, large mul multinational organizations are concerned. Uh, the test alums are there at amazing positions, leading the HR pack over there. That's true. So we have a very huge alumni base and everyone is very helpful and cooperative. So that is what we, uh, I, mean, I, I mean, I personally experienced it in the last semester during the field work. 
so we like i contacted a lot of alumni for many inputs and about the field work and about for help in various segments so everyone was cooperative and did not hesitate to help uh, life at this so this semester we experienced life at this online so even though it was shifted online every the our batch was very amiable as well as the uh, professors and the seniors they helped a lot to make it to so that we do not miss anything and the course also it was kept the same as it was it was not reduced so that we do not miss out on anything the same thing with all the other activities held on the campus like the leadership talks or the placement activities or various other uh, committee things so we have the major committees of tesa the a first is the arc aspirants relations committee of which i am a part of so it is the official pr and branding committee of tes and it also helps aspirants for their query solving and the pit pr process the next is forum so the so uh, the scope of forum it includes uh, various interactions and discussions and exclusive uh, events with the eminent personalities it also conducts a uh, yearly event called manthan every year the next is alumni committee it is responsible for maintaining the uh, social connectivity with the alums of the institute after they graduate uh, the next is edcom so edcom conducts events like uh, paridrishya it has a kostubam magazine which it uh, in which various number of chros and the leadership i mean they cover the themes they cover across it so even though the batch size is very small it is an added advantage as everyone knows everyone uh, so even the faculties know all of us and they are in a better position to help and guide us so nilanjan if you can uh, talk more about the offline experience yeah so as your batch is the unfortunate batch uh, who are not uh, enjoying the campus life at this so as uh, tulika mentioned that uh, the batch of 60 that is of hrm and lr conduct lot of activities uh, that are cultural in nature that are uh, academic in nature and uh, related to business in nature but the real uh, fun of life at this is beyond the scope of hrm and lr as well because there are more than 30 odd courses more than 12 schools in the in the campus itself and you will find lot of activities and engagement happening throughout the year in the campus all the time be it the quadrangle the iconic quadrangle in the old campus or the uh, amphitheater in the uh, new campus or the auditorium for example uh, i remember attending one of the events in which uh, bhavri devi was guest and that or uh, event was organized by the women centric practices and uh, Uh, the lady who just uh, made sure that vishaka committee became a reality uh, in terms of law and uh, led to a revolutionary law that came uh, that uh, helps uh, organizations to prevent any kind of uh, sexual misconduct happening in the workplace i met her it was an event not organized by the students of hrm and lr but meeting her uh, listening her and interacting her was amazing at the same time uh, every evening if you have some time there is something going on some session some webinar some seminar like i remember meeting so many historians in the campus though hr does not conduct similar kind of uh, events in which you uh, hear uh, historians or social scientists or political scientists talking but other courses in this are engaged in similar activities uh, or some uh, the the school of Uh, so media and cultural studies conducts a film festival in the campus documentary festival in the campus so life at this is amazing uh, if you find some time from your hectic schedule uh, you will learn and evolve with the campus uh, the campus will give you varied exposure to various other kind of uh, events uh, and, and everything and you can collaborate it's not that Uh, uh you just can't collaborate with the film festival that is being organized by the media and cultural school you will develop friendship with them you will you'll uh, partner with them they'll seek your help at times um, you know and uh, yeah so uh, three spots uh, very likely 
uh, something or the other is happening in the campus for entertainment, for en enrichment, and all other uh, intellectual demands that one can expect from a campus life. So I think this is an added advantage, especially for as our course is uh, HR related, since there are a uh, lot of various schools pertaining to social sciences present in the campus, we are able to develop an holistic idea of the things happening around us. And that also helps us in the professional career ahead. And also the feeling of family is very strong at this. So it's, it provides a very good support system for us. Um, Chaitanya, would you like to go ahead from here? So uh, now coming to industry exposure, so as Tulika mentioned initially that uh, fieldwork is one source through which you can get exposure to different industries. We have four fieldworks as she told initially. Uh, I'm sorry. No problem. Yeah. So, but apart from uh, this, uh, you know, we usually have a lot of leadership talks, uh, guest lectures, wherein eminent personalities from the field of HR and other domains of industry come and interact with us. So that is also something that can add on to our learning. Uh, in our first semester itself, we have something known as uh, uh, interaction with uh, head HRs, wherein CHROs uh, kind of come and throw some light upon relevant topics in human resource management. We get an opportunity to kind of question them on different aspects. And uh, I think that just in the first one, two months itself of the course beginning, uh, you start getting a perspective about uh, the industry as a whole, like what all is happening in the industry, how different organizations, different HR teams are kind of up with different situations, what strategies they adopt. So kind of initially only you begin understanding things about uh, how the market functions, how the HR industry functions. That's something that can be very helpful. Next slide. Yeah, so coming to perhaps the most important uh, part of this presentation is the selection procedure now. So uh, there are two stages and the second stage has two parts, as you can see on the screen. So the first stage is TISNET, which is on the 20th of February. The second stage is TISMAT. The tentative dates are probably uh, in the last week of March or first uh, week of April. You will be notified. And the final hurdle is the personal interview, the online personal interview. Now, uh, there's a slight change compared to what the process was last year. Last year, TISNET and TISMAT were together. But now uh, you have to make through the cutoff of TISNET to be eligible to give the TISMAT and uh, subsequently the online personal interview. Now for your name to appear in the final merit list, uh, the weightage for all these exams are as follows. So 30% will be the weightage for this net, 40% uh, will be the weightage for this mat, and uh, the weightage for the online interview will be 30%. So, yeah. so now uh, just uh, coming to certain uh, tips that I can give you, we can give you rather for uh, the exam. And for that first, we need to understand the structure of the exam. So there are 100 questions and you have 100 minutes for these questions. So there's no negative marking in this exam. And uh, there's one mark for every correct answer. Now coming to the breakup, okay, in terms of questions. So English proficiency, there are 30 questions. Mathematics and logical reasoning, there are again 30 questions. And GK has uh, 40 questions. And there's one thing that you need to note here is that there's a sectional cutoff for GK. So that is 35%, which is 14 marks for the general EWS, uh, Kashmir migrant and armed forces category. And 30%, which is 12 marks for OBC, NC and PWD category. So it's something that you need to make a note of. And the TISNET is a common admission exam for all programs uh, offered at, uh, for all MA programs offered at TIS. Now, uh, what becomes the differentiating factor in this exam? You know, and it is ultimately GK because it is the make or break section. You know, that's what I believe because you'll either know the answer for a question or you may not know the answer. I mean, you wouldn't be spending up a lot of time thinking of what an answer can be or kind of arriving at something, which probably may be the case in the numericals. So that is why, you know, having a good understanding of uh, current affairs and certain static uh, issues can be very helpful for you. Now coming to uh, how you look and approach this exam, you can look at this as uh, 60 and 40. You know, so 60 marks is your English proficiency and your mathematics and 40 marks is your GK question. So kind of you can target it as this way so that you can decide, you can kind of, uh, you know, aim a particular uh, score that you want to achieve. Now, uh, since the, you know, the purview of uh, the GK section is very wide, it has a current affairs as well as static. So it's very important for you to be 
selective about the sources that you refer to for your preparation i mean you can i mean it's ideal that you refer to more than one two sources but kind of don't uh, you know keep a lot of things open for you like uh, one thing you're starting from this one thing you're starting from this yes that is needed but kind of don't have a lot of material so that you know it reduces the amount of confusion that you will have now uh, as it's mentioned here revision is the key the more you will revise your general knowledge the more you'll retain so uh, that is uh, paramount and uh, then another thing is that you can maintain notes now on a personal level i would i was maintaining notes also for my current affairs i would kind of prepare uh, notes at the same time for uh, you know other things i would usually underline highlight and mark things uh, in my books that i was referring to so you know i what i feel is when you are you are underlining and highlighting things when you come back to that material or that page maybe after four five days or a week it's kind of uh, psychologically it becomes easy for you to remember because you have that uh, kind of belief that you already done this you read this at some point of time and if you kind of make small notes in your book like you've read a paragraph and then decide that if you kind of summarize it in two three lines it kind of is easier for you to you know just read through whenever you're revising again so that is what you can uh, do in terms of your approach coming to the next slide yeah so these are some of the important uh, gk topics that you need to cover as you can see on your screen there is polity there is geography there is history current affairs sports social issues and various miscellaneous things so this is as per the previous trend so i mean you can kind of go beyond this also you don't need to restrict yourself to these topics but these are some things that you can cover uh, now there's one question that uh, you all might be having that uh, in your mind that uh, since it's so vast like how do we kind of decide where to what material to use and all so that's totally up to you you can use uh, online sources you can use any of the best selling books that are available uh, you can use uh, material on the internet in terms of youtube channels and all so uh, what you need to do is you need to give some time to yourself you know start referring to certain material see for a couple of days whether you are able to understand that whether whether you are able to absorb what all content is then you can read and whether you are able to retain it after a few days and on the basis of that then you can build your strategy in terms of okay you know this is what i've read i'm understanding this particular uh, uh, say for example polity from this source so i should continue with this source they i'm reading this material from the internet i'm reading this from this particular book i'm able to understand this the language flow seems very good so i'll be continuing with this so this is what you need to do yourself you know so the strategy is to each its own i mean it ultimately depends on what works for you so i mean whatever strategy you adopt ultimately then you will have a story to tell later also once you're able to make through the course so uh, as you know there are 40 questions and ideally you should be able to attempt the 40 questions in 15 minutes uh, as mentioned here and again uh, you know you can have a revision calendar actually you can kind of decide every day what all you want to do i mean that's again up to you whether you want to have that approach like you can plan out every day i'm going to complete say for example history the other day i'm going to do geography but uh, that's uh, your total outlook one more thing that you can do is that you can have material on your mobile phone now this is something that uh, i was doing very often so if in case i was traveling anywhere in case i was uh, you know anywhere out i would just read through my phone i had certain pdfs that i would use so that can be helpful like just to share one incidents that uh, i had gone for a wedding uh, last year and uh, at times when the functions of the wedding were not on i would kind of read material on my phone and uh, so nobody would come to know also that i was kind of studying i mean people would think i was talking to somebody or i was playing a game so having material on the phone is really helpful that's what i feel yeah next slide okay so that was about uh, this net and uh, now uh, coming to this mat okay so once you're once you clear the cut off for this net uh, you will be eligible to get the this mat and as i mentioned initially you would be notified the dates now uh, this is a uh, slightly different in terms of the structure you have 45 minutes and uh, there are 50 marks there is no sectional cut off here or an aggregate cut off so the more you score the better it is for your final uh, you know the or the final score that you will get there are 35 mcq questions and one descriptive writing question now this is a new addition when we give this mat last year we didn't have a descriptive writing question so this is something that you will have to kind of prepare upon there is one mark for every right answer and there is a negative marking over here that is a point 25 will be your negative marking in case you get this wrong now uh, coming to the split there is a reading comprehension will have uh, 10 questions uh, usually uh, there will be kind of uh, two comprehensions that you will have there will be data interpretation there will be three sets of 15 questions and then there will be business awareness there will be 10 questions on that 
and descriptive writing will be a 15 mark uh, question where you will have to write upon topics uh, of economics, politics, business, organization, all of this as mentioned here. So uh, one thing that you need to remember here is that you have to type, yeah, I'm saying writing, but you, you have to type the descriptive uh, question, you know, so in case your uh, speed is not really good, you can work upon that also for your descriptive writing. And uh, this is compulsory for the HRM course, as mentioned earlier, this mat is given by them for that. And now certain tips that you can uh, kind of uh, keep in kind of follow or you can, you know, incorporate in your strategy. You need to remember that uh, time management becomes extremely critical for this mat, you know, because uh, at times the questions can be slightly lengthy also, and it's 45 minutes only. So kind of you'll have to be very good with your calculations for maths and DI. So one way to look at this uh, test is as uh, 10 questions, 25 questions and one question, as you can see on your screen. So 10 questions are for business awareness, 25 questions are for uh, data interpretation and reading comprehension. And one is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is, is for the descriptive writing. So yeah, I mean, in case you're not good with calculations, you can really start working on that as uh, I mean, that will be kind of a game changer for you because the difficulty level is usually uh, easy to moderate. But uh, only it's calculations that you usually usually take your time. So you'll have to practice more on this. Business awareness, as mentioned, may kind of seem to be a vast section for you. But uh, one strategy that you can adopt is when you're doing your regular current affairs for this net. You know, at that time only, you can kind of, uh, you know, uh, chart out certain material for business. Say, for example, you're reading something and you see something that is, okay, this is a business news. You know, you can underline that or kind of separately maintain most of that so that uh, you have it separately somewhere or you have it marked separately in your main notes only you can highlight it with some other color so that you know okay this is a business awareness question so when you're preparing after this net you have the material very handy and uh, so as you know business awareness will have a certain can have certain questions of hrm also uh, as it's mentioned on our website the elaborate syllabus so uh, you can go for uh, hrm quizzes also which may be available online and yeah that's about it so this is what you can do for your this Next slide. Okay, so uh, the final step is the online personal interview. Uh, so ARC will be coming up with an initiative for this once uh, your uh, test net and all is over. So that uh, kind of it'll be more elaborate. You'll get more understanding of how you can kind of plan your preparation for that. But just to give you a little idea about what all comes, what all you need to do for your personal interview. So you need to have an understanding of the institute first. That is DISS, the program, the HRM and LR, different type of subjects that are offered. You know, and once you have an understanding of this, uh, it'll really help you because it'll help you understand your interest area. So once you know the subjects that are there in HRM and LR, you can try to relate those subjects to your work experience in case you're a fresher, anything, any kind of experience that you had, you can see, you can read about them and, you know, decide like, okay, this is something that I'm liking, you know, that will help you in your uh, speak about uh, why your inclination is towards this course, you know, uh, when you give your interview. Apart from that, you need to have some amount of awareness about our society as a whole. Okay, that is very important because ultimately this is a social institute, right? So like certain, you know, burning issues of a society, certain challenges is something that you need to be aware of. Now, uh, exhibiting gen uh, genuine interest in the program and its outcome. Yeah, this is very important. Like, you know, this question, why it is, why HR, why do you want to be an HR professional and why do you want to study at this? Now, this is something that you really have to think about you will have to kind of, you know, ponder upon this uh, and, you know, and you'll have to kind of come up with something like something that seems very genuine, something that really will, you know, help you uh, kind of make yourself uh, look different from others when you come to the personal interview. So one way you can, you know, as I mentioned initially is that you can go through the subjects and see like if there's something that is interesting you, why it is interesting you. So that is one approach that you can adopt. Now, the next thing is deciding your X factor. Uh, this becomes extremely critical because uh, this is something that can help you, you know, give a particular direction to your interview. So when you're in your interview, it is at times you can also, you can only kind of give a direction to your interview in terms of when you speak about something. Okay, you're, say for example, you're talking about your past experience, you're talking about your academics, you know, you want to make the interviewer ask you questions the way you want. I mean, this is what I feel. So say for example, I'm speaking something about my work X. So I want the interviewer to ask me questions on my work, which probably I've prepared well on that. So in case you have an X factor to speak about, it will really help you in your interview. Maintaining composure and smile, that's also very important for your interview. I mean, it's, I mean, you have, you want to portray yourself to be, you know, a very easygoing kind of a person and you shouldn't seem very stressed. 
then uh, yeah one more important concern here is gap years you know a lot of people have this concern that okay i have gap years i was preparing for something else uh, how will i be able to justify this now one thing you need to remember is that uh, at this there will be freshers there will be people who have experience and there will certainly be people who have a lot of gaps also in their career or in their academy so you don't have to really bother about that what is important is that you have to you will be, you should be able to explain or justify what were you doing in this period like what is there any learning that you had in this period you know that becomes important so as long as you are able to you know kind of show some learning show some experience that you've gained uh, it gap year should not be a major problem and finally uh, you can uh, prepare you, you should prepare a bio sketch of uh, sketch of yourself like you know what all you've done in your life what all your interest areas this is something that can uh, really help you yeah so that's about it next slide yeah so uh, ultimately we are a social institute and uh, these are all our uh, social media handles you can follow us on all of them uh, on facebook twitter instagram and uh, there's a 100 day uh, quizopia that is on on the aspirants group on facebook so kind of you can join that also in case you want to get an idea of what kind of questions are asked and uh, you know you'll get some understanding on that now uh, coming to one last thing is that see ultimately it is an exam right what happen and you need to treat it as an exam i mean kind of don't try to attach a lot of uh, you know i mean an extra amount of value or prestige to this okay so i mean it's one day in your life uh, when you have to give it this net and uh, you know whatever the outcome is you have to just be positive about it and you know there there are definitely other things that you have you can do better in life so and don't i mean you know what happens is when you attach a lot of prestige to things there's a possibility that you know, it stresses you a lot you know when i think that okay this is if you think this is my last chance or something that is something that will constantly keep be in your head and it will not serve you beneficial because then it will add on to your stress and may not help you prepare well so think of this as one day about one exam that's about it and look at the other side also more than try not to be you know anxious or something before the exam try to be excited that okay tomorrow is the day once i'm done with this i'm done with the preparation at least for some time whatever the outcome is i'll certainly look at the positives and there's definitely something else that i can do so that should be your approach and that was my approach so yeah and that's how you can kind of plan your process strategy okay. okay so you can post your questions on the live chat and we'll answer them some of them are already here so i'll just take one question um why should i join this someone has asked so as we already mentioned in the start that this is not just a b school it is definitely one notch better so you get an holistic idea about the society as such when you are at this with foundation courses with dissertation in your curriculum with field works which are very unique to this so i think and also the roi that it is one of the differentiating factor of this so these are some of the unique things which i think can motivate you to apply for the program uh, chaitanya niranjan if you would like to add something yeah uh, why test uh, uh, the basic answer to the, this would be that if you want to study hr even in a distant tree this is the place for it okay so first of all it is the best uh, at least one of the best two best places in the country to study hrm and la second as she mentioned the roi part though in a long run roi doesn't matter uh, yet it is an important and integral part of it third is that uh, it is it 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 is a life a life changing experience to be a part of this legacy it is just not uh, the courses you do there it's the kind of people you meet there the diverse kind of people you meet there uh, for example uh in this uh, i met a lot of people from a uh, tribal background and i was witness to the one of the biggest tribal festivals that happened in the campus and i could empathize understand collaborate uh, learn from their lived experiences better in business every day there is a conversation that diversity and inclusion in business has a big business impact a financial impact as well i am sure that had i not been in this i had i just uh, followed the engineering plus a uh, b school part maybe i would not have uh, discovered a large diversity that 
exist in the work uh, that will come to workplaces when I become a human resource manager or now as I'm a human resource manager. So this is one of the things that happened. Uh, it, it, it's a, a life-changing experience for sure. Uh, Chaitanya? So, uh, as I mentioned initially that I had uh, two years of work experience in the field of HR itself. But uh, what I feel is uh, this course, uh, to a certain extent, is giving me a humane aspect to HRM also. You know, like, uh, I mean, you can study management. I mean, that is what we are studying anyways. We're studying subjects of HRM, management, all of that. But there is a social orientation also this course gives you. So you can, that can be your distinguishing factor. I mean, you're an HR professional with a slight human approach. I mean, and that is what will kind of make you, at par I mean, kind of differentiate you from others. What I feel. That is the reason why I should apply for this course. Uh, okay, so someone has asked, does educational background matter for selection at TIS? So the answer is no, as TIS welcomes everyone from all the backgrounds. We have a very diverse crowd here. There are people from engineering backgrounds, commerce, uh, psychology, human, humanities, so people from all the backgrounds of all the ages, even our batchmates, some of them are married, some have kids, some have just graduated, some have gap years, some are preparing for UPSC. So we have a very nice mixed crowd. And so educational background does not matter for the application. Oh, I see a question here that uh, I have a research background. Will it be beneficial in the interview? Uh, so, I mean, there's nothing that can add on. I mean, there's nothing like it will be beneficial or anything. I mean, you can make it beneficial by the way you kind of portray yourself and speak in the interview. Yeah. So, I mean, from the beginning, I don't think so. It's something that can benefit you as such. It's, it's a level playing field for everyone. Like, uh, 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 all, and, and uh, one thing that I would like to add is that your interview experience will be amazing at this. And uh, the professors or the panel, which constitute of professors of this industry experts and uh, professors of other courses as well, uh, it, they will objectively analyze your performance and conversation on that day. So it's upon you what you want to present as your strong point, as uh, Chaitanya already mentioned, that uh, identify your X factor and try to take a leverage of it during the interview. And one thing, one genuine suggestion for interview process would be, be genuine, be honest. That is one value that everyone associated with this values a lot. Um, Niranjan, we have a question for you. What type of roles that are offered after one graduates from TIS? So, uh, for example, uh, like before coming to HR or people who are not exposed to HR while doing the entry level jobs, uh, like everyone else, I also feel that HR's role is recruitment or onboarding people, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so if I name just the few functional areas that industry has in terms of HR offerings is like talent management, performance management, learning and development, career management, a compensation and benefit, uh, leadership development, um, just name it, and HR has diverse role in it. Uh, so to give you an example, when you are coming out of this or uh, say any other premium B school, uh, you will not be given a lot of transactional roles to be precise. You'll be given a lot of uh, project-based role initially in first year or second year, like all other uh, great organization have the management training program where you'll be exposed to various roles or various stints in first year or two, where you'll be dealing with various projects or deliverables of various functions. For example, you might be given a problem to uh, engage the employee, uh, uh, to increase or analyze the employee engagement, for example in the first stint and you will understand, uh, analyze uh, what is the employee engagement of the organization is, how, how you can uh, make it better, you'll benchmark, you'll study uh, the industry practices, uh, you will design and recommend interventions, et cetera, et cetera. 
this is one. Maybe six months down the line in the first uh, year or second year of your career itself, uh, you are in a compensation and benefit projects or you're working with a total rewards project that, uh, for example, uh, this COVID has changed the entire mindset about uh, how employees want organization to help them in terms of benefits and reward. So there would be some people or a group of people in HRT who would be designing that on a constant basis, uh, understanding employee expectations on a constant basis, trying to uh, use uh, technology to, uh, to gather data, analyze and understand it, and then design new offerings on a very dynamic basis. So you'll be doing real strategic jobs, which will actually impact business in a real time. So uh, uh, all those jokes that are there, Rangoli and all, uh, they are very essential as well, but that's not what you'll be doing after coming from this. Right, so we have uh, one more question from Arpit. He says, I have two years gap, can I get into this? So yes, I also had a gap as I was uh, briefly preparing for UPSC civil services. So gap does not matter as long as you're able to justify the same in the interview. Uh, also, you, I mean, use the gap in a positive sense rather as a weakness. So show in the interview that what, how the gap years have changed you, what you have learned in those gap years and how they have added value to your knowledge. So I think that will not be any problem. Yeah, I see many questions here for, uh, I mean, people are asking about mock tests. So, uh, I mean, you can go for any, I mean, like, and there's no specific, like, number of how many mocks you need to give. So, yeah, I mean, whichever, uh, so, so you can go for that. And, uh, I mean, I'll really help you only, you know, time yourself and kind of understand whether how, well, whether you can complete the test in 100 minutes. That's about it. You can go for GK quizzes uh, online. That will help you. Then, uh, and about uh, for practice, more practice we want like daily practice to maintain consistency. We have like 100 days of Questopia on Tisnet Aspirants official group on Facebook. You can follow that. So today is day 94. Uh, it's going to get over, but we'll post a compilation of all the questions towards the end. So keep a track on that. There's one more question here, TISMET, uh, TISNET and TISMAT. They will happen on separate days. Uh, they won't be together. The date for TISMAT will be kind of notified to you later on. Uh, how do I prepare for static GK is another question here. For static GK, you can, as I mentioned initially, that uh, you can go for any of the best-selling books or material online. And, you know, spend some time. You can uh, kind of see what suits you. And, uh, and then kind of stick with that material. That's about it. So, I mean, specifically, I wouldn't say that, I mean, go for this or that, but whatever suits you. So you can refer to any book, uh, any material online. You can go for videos also on the internet. That will also help. Um, someone has asked, can you change domains later or in the career? Uh, Niranjan, if you can throw some light on that. Okay. So uh, uh, when you uh, enter uh, uh, industry as an HR professional, uh, you can change your domain, but it completely depends on the organization you work for. So there are organizations which are very open so that people from say marketing and uh, finance uh, can be seen working in HR domain. So I have met a lot of people uh, in like exposure at TITS itself that who had a business background, uh, who were like doing marketing, et cetera, et cetera. And then they made the transition to HR. At the same time, I told you that uh, one of the examples that comes to my mind is Santrup Mishra, uh, who is uh, the CEO or the business leader of the organization. So it's not that that uh, dynamism is not available. But that is more, more about the organization you work in. A few organizations are really into this. Say, uh, like I work for TCS 
And after a few years, uh, maybe if I, I am identified for the talent uh, uh, leadership development pool, uh, I will be ex uh, exposed to various other business roles. And then if I do well there, I have all the chance to grow. So that's more of an organization than uh, the entire stream as a whole. But yes, you can make that transition. You also will have to keep adding to your skill. If you want to make the transition from HR to business, you will really have to add to your skill while you work with the organization in terms of the fact that you know how to crunch data, how to uh, make uh, or derive insights from the data that you will do from uh, HR perspective as well. But can you uh, link your HR uh, instincts or insights to the business? Do you understand the business number? Do you understand the industry or how, uh, how revenue is generated in the organization? And if you uh, do that, you devote time in doing that, you will be always collaborating with a business leader all the time being in the HR domain as well. Uh, and, and if you are impressive, certainly opportunities will knock your door in your career. So I see your question here, how do I prepare for points? So for points, uh, in case you're preparing for any other uh, B-School entrance exam, I think uh, you would have covered most of the syllabus. Uh, there'll be certain things that you will have to cover separately, like, uh, you know, stuff to do with number system and all that you can do separately. And uh, yeah, so apart from that, then can you share last year's TISNET papers? So uh, actually, TIS does not release any papers. Uh, for any of the years. So, I mean, we wouldn't have that. But uh, on YouTube, you can get a few things, a certain material. Uh, I mean, we wouldn't vouch for the reliability of them, but at least they'll give you some idea. So, there'll be memory based papers, people who would have given the exam, they would have put it on YouTube. So, you can kind of just see them to get some idea of how the papers are. Um, there is a question about placements. So, I think this is something we missed in the PPT. So, there are various, there are various chances to get placed at this one is through ppi that is the case study competition so you can secure an interview with the company uh, the next is ppo that is when you uh, intern when you do your summer intern with an organization there are chances that you will be offered a ppo that is pre-placement offer then there is fpo that is field work placement offer so this is also an advantage at this that uh, you do your field works and if the recruit if the uh, organization likes you, they offer you a field work placement offer too. And the last is two laterals. So those who already have work experience, they can also get like they are placed first. I mean, they have a chance to get placed first. So these are various ways with which you can get placed at this. Of course, the final placement day. Yes, the final placements. There's a question here, uh, how many marks for TISnet plus TISMAT must uh, secure for a seat in HRM and LR? Uh, so that varies, yeah. So there's no specific number for that. I mean, it totally depends on the year. But uh, I mean, the more you get, the better it is for that. Then there's a question here, are there any HR concepts that one needs to know uh, before the interview? You would need to know a few HR concepts, I'd say, but uh, and uh, but before the interview, I mean, ARC will do a specific session, so they're guiding more on that. Um, Niranjan, there is a question again for you. What is the level of rigor in the two-year program? Do we get time to indulge in our hobbies? Uh, it, the course is rigorous for sure, like any other uh, course in a in any P school. The uh, there is rigor. Uh, but uh, you'll you'll find some time for that as well. Like I was, uh, I was into I was in one of the committees, the editorial committees. So I would organize a lot of events, um, and I was more into writing and poetry. So I I could interact with a lot of poets and uh, writers due to that. Uh, also, the life becomes a little more easier when you finish your summer internship and come in second year. Uh, then first, you are used to the rigor. Then second, uh, if you get PPO, then you can chill a bit more as compared to other people who miss the bus. And uh, yeah, certainly you have to prioritize also that if you want to uh, build a lot of case studies or you want to enjoy the life at, at campus in terms of 
attending those seminars or sessions or listening to those great historians and social experts. So you'll have to make that smart choice. Uh, courses Riga, but it it gives you some time for yourself as well. And in second year, it's little more than the first year. There was a question here: Is there a elimination after test mat? Or uh, there's no elimination after test mat? So I mean, if you've made through test net and uh, you'll give the test mat, you'll give the online interview, and then uh, the percentages, as I mentioned, on the basis of that, the final score will be there on the basis of which you'll either make it or not. Uh, how to prepare for interview, as I mentioned initially, I mean, we will tell you later on once you're done. I mean, your primary target now should be to prepare for this net. So interview, we will let you know what strategy and all you can adopt. One thing that I would like to add for the interview part uh, that starts from today, if you have not already, read newspaper, any newspaper, uh, keep in touch with the newspaper till the interview day and rest of your life, starting from today, if you have not started. Hello, there are some technical issues. Uh, I guess uh, Tulika has been dropped off the call. Ketanya, can you take further questions? Yeah. There's a question here. How does weightage work? I mean, I didn't get this specifically. So how does weightage work in terms of, okay, so how much ever you score, is a, as I mentioned, it's 30% uh, for TISnet, 40% for TISMAT, and 30% uh, for the online person interview. What is the career of HR in the field of agriculture? Uh, I mean, Niranjan, in case you have an idea on that. Agriculture, I presume it's agri-based industries. Uh, maybe you can start the social entrepreneurship in field of agriculture. So that's the best part of being in a test. For example, uh, Tulika and uh, Chaitanya mentioned about the dissertation that you have, the research that you uh, undertake in your uh, um, master's thesis. Uh, you can choose any area from any other school from the TITS itself. So there are social entrepreneurship uh, is a course. So you can choose any subject under any professor from that department. There is livelihood promotion, promotion and social entrepreneurship as a different course in this in the school of social work. Maybe you have an idea uh, that is based out of agriculture. You want to scale it economically, start building it as a research uh, work uh, from masters itself. And for that, you have all the experts and expertise in terms of professors and uh, uh, academic support at the campus. You can do that. Also in CBCS, I took up a subject called livelihood promotion, uh, subject based out of that, where I learned the uh, academic aspects of how to uh, build uh, social uh, entrepreneurships, uh, entrepreneurships that are rooted in social levels and agriculture can be a part to that. So while you are learning the tricks of man management and business management being an HR, you can build on that if you have something like that uh, as a future in mind. This is one question here. Uh... Can you tell me the LOD? I presume that's level of difficulty for PONS, LR, DI, and TISnet. Uh, the level of difficulty would be easy to moderate. Yeah, that's about it. Then uh, I saw a question. What is a typical, describe a typical day at this? Okay. So uh, for us, so it's virtual currently, but it's still kind of full of a lot of activities. We have lectures. We have, uh, I mean, our conventional lectures uh, through college. Then we have, at times, we have guest lectures. We have uh, various other events also. So as uh, uh, Tulika mentioned initially, like uh, Pari Drishra is an event that uh, concluded recently where we had eminent personalities come and speak to us on certain issues. Yeah, so there are lectures, guest lectures. Uh, that I mean, if you're a part of a committee, then you'll have certain kind of aspects related to that committee also. Uh, 
that's about it. In case you're doing your field work, then you'll have to be doing field work and there'll be certain assignments also that you'll have. So you'll be doing all of that. That's your typical date. Some fun in between as well. So it's not that you'll be all doing yeah. <laughs> work and you know <laughs> we'll all become machines after coming to this that's not happening you'll, you'll get ample time uh, to recreate as well uh, so there's one question here uh, for about current affairs till up to what date uh, so see uh, for current affairs you can prepare uh, about a minimum of one year uh, from testnet so yeah that i mean more than that also it will be helpful but a minimum of one year is what is ideal uh, there are a lot of questions on this part. So I would like to say that uh, for the HRM and LR course, we have to give this mat and not this part. That is for other courses. So in this session, we are pertaining to questions only for HRM and LR. There's one question here. How does labor relations especially uh, help us in our career in HRM? Okay. Uh, so Niranjan, you, you want to take that? So, uh, so HR is one job that is uh, sector, uh, sector agnostic. So for example, uh, you can become an HR, you can get placed in say uh, Maruti Suzuki. Okay. And you might have a plant role there or you might get placed with HUL and your first job stint will be in a plant because uh, you need to understand what happens at the grassroots to rise the hierarchy and understand everything. So then your understanding of labor relations in an academic perspective will help you navigate that atmosphere and environment properly. Then there can be your roles that are very specific to industrial relation itself that you may start working with uh, the, the, the function called industrial relation itself, where you are dealing with uh, uh, unions, you are working on long-term settlements and uh, trade. You, you are managing uh, trade unions, or there can be a situation that uh, there is no trade union in a, a factory that is being set up by an organization. So for example, ITC is making a new factory uh, and they want to set up a trade union. So if you come from that background, you might get a job specifically to do that. So that is that in manufacturing and all other things, this is going to help you a lot. Also, uh, understanding the, uh, the labor economy, uh, how to deal with trade unions and subjects like negotiation management uh, can be extrapolated to any other uh, job roles as well. Like you need to negotiate day in, day out with all the stakeholders uh, going ahead in your career. So uh, that understanding will help you a lot. Okay, so I think we have reached the end of the session now. Uh, thank you so much, Niranjan, for taking out time today yes, and sharing all your experiences and wisdom with us. And I'm sure it will be very helpful for the aspirants. To learn. Thank you so much for having me and it was a really nice uh, session that uh, Chaitanya, Tulika, uh, Devyanshu and uh, Shubham organized. Hope aspirants uh, can, can have some learning from and apply and hope to see you in this. Thank you. Thank you so much.